Hi, this is Jim Grange. This is going to be a very quick video discussing one of the most misunderstood aspects of psychological statistics, and that is what is a p-value. So you'll have heard your statistics lecturer or professor uh, talking to you about p-values and statistical uh, significance. Well, uh, most students and in fact most researchers don't really understand what a p-value is and what it's trying to tell the researcher. So this video is not going to go into any of the mathematics for how to calculate a p-value, but rather it's going to address a conceptual understanding of what a p-value is trying to tell you. So let's put this on a concrete footing. Let's say you're a researcher interested in whether caffeine affects attentional performance or not. So you recruit participants and you randomly assign them to one of two groups. You can put people in the caffeine pill condition or in the placebo pill uh, condition. And then you run an experiment where you put these groups through some sort of attentional vigilance task, for example. And let's say you get this data. So here we have attention score on the y-axis. Here's the data for the caffeine group and here's the data for the placebo group. We see that numerically that uh, people in the caffeine group seem to be scoring much better in terms of attention than people in the placebo group. What the researcher is interested in is whether this difference reflects reality or not. Does caffeine really truly improve attentional performance? Now most of the st statistics you've probably been taught during your undergraduate course has been what's called Null Hypothesis Significance Testing or NHST. Now remember a null hypothesis is stating that there is no difference so a null hypothesis significance test is really testing whether there is no difference in your data. So what are the steps of NHST? So the first step is after data collection you carry out some statistical analysis on the data. In this case we would do an unrelated t-test but this doesn't matter too much. Uh, so we do a t-test this gives us a value known as a test statistic. So this is where you'll see written t equals 2.586. 2.586 is known as our test statistic. But in SPSS, etc., we also get another piece of information, which is the p-value. So together with the test statistic of 2.586, we'd see that the p-value equals 0 0.012. If this p-value is below 0.05 we deem the effect significant so in psychology we use a threshold of 0.05 if that p-value that you've obtained in your test is below 0.05 you can declare that there is a significant difference in your data but what does this actually mean what we're now asking is what is a p-value what is this trying to tell us well, if you've uh, sat through uh, statistics courses, you've probably heard the definition of the p-value. So here's a little test for you. What I want you to do is pause the video. Uh, so it's a multiple choice. Which of the following is the true definition of p? So if you're not sure, uh, that's fine. But try and have a guess. Try and intuit what the p-value that you've been hearing about for the past year or two years. What is the definition of this p-value? Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and you haven't uh, haven't cheated. Well, the true definition of the p-value is C, the probability of observing results as extreme or more as the ones you've obtained if the null hypothesis is true. So most people are really surprised by this because most people believe that the definition of the p-value is A. This is that the probability that the results are due to chance or, put another way, the probability that the null hypothesis is true. This is completely incorrect. So you might be surprised by the answer, but don't fear. Lots of people get this question wrong. Uh, even there's been some uh, nice uh, experiments uh, 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 assessing researchers' understanding of the p-value, and even professors sometimes get this wrong. So the p-value is severely misunderstood this has a knock-on effect because people using them aren't testing what they think they're testing and in psychology we all use p-values but most people don't understand what the p-value is trying to tell you but now we have the correct definition of p in hand we can now make sense of our experimental outcome so recall that we had a group difference this difference had a t-value of 2.586 and the p-value observed was 0 0.012 
Recall that the true definition of the p-value is the probability of observing results as extreme or more so as the ones you've obtained if the null hypothesis is true. We can reformulate this in terms of our experiment and we can say that the probability of observing a result as extreme or more as the one we've obtained if there is no effect of caffeine in reality is 0.012. What this is telling us is that it is very unlikely to observe the result that we have if caffeine doesn't really have an effect in reality. People, uh, and by people I mean researchers, now use this to infer that we can conclude caffeine does have an effect. So it's really important when you're trying to understand what the p-value is doing is to keep the true definition in mind. So the true definition of the p-value the probability of observing results as extreme as the ones you've obtained if the null hypothesis is true, so if there's no effect in reality. In the case of our experiment, the probability of observing the result we have if there is no effect of caffeine is 0.012. So if in reality caffeine does not affect attentional performance, then the probability of observing the results that we just saw in our experiment is really low there's a really low probability of observing the difference that we have if nothing at all is going on. This is why we want a low p-value because it means that the probability of observing the data that we have if there is no effect going on is really small. Therefore by reverse inference we can conclude caffeine does indeed have an effect. So this is uh, the definition of the p-value. Hope this helps you conceptually understand what the p-value is trying to tell you so therefore when you're using it in your own research you'll be more confident in trying to interpret your data and finally understand what the p-value is trying to tell you.